on the big piece on here. Put the gold ochre down um, as the base foundation, and then I have come back in and blocked in uh, the purple, uh, deep purple, and the uh, orchid purple. So the uh, the gold ochre is a being an earth color, it's going to ground the painting. So when anybody looks at the painting, everything will feel feet on the ground and um, situated and comforting. So people say that my paintings feel soothing and energizing, uplifting all at once. This is this is why the foundation is very feet on the ground with the earth colors. And these um, foundational colors also, uh, the purple is the seventh chakra, so we're talking about the connection to spirit. So we put you on, you put your feet on earth, and you put your head up there with spirit. Uh, my experimental pieces over the weekend, I'll just give you a quick tour of those. There's another one here, a little guy. This is just a block in. And these other two here on the table are mid-process. Oh, I think we're getting a bad glare on this. So this one is mid-process. And in here, I'm playing with some ideas of uh, weaving, uh, drawing, uh, etching lines in it with the palette knife so that it, um, it starts to feel like fabric. Um, some of you know that I really, really love fabric, so I'm scratching away at it here. Some of it's um, drawn, um, etched striations, and the paint is both opaque and translucent. And that whole concept, let me go around here and get this little one. That whole concept, I'm exploring a bit further in this one. I don't know if I can tilt it to the light so that it shows well. Maybe if we get the um, you can see some of the, the, the detail lines um, here with the palette knife work, translucent, opaque paint. This one's a little more further developed than the first, but just playing with these ideas before um, I go to the large piece. And there's one other one I've been messing around with this weekend in prep for the big piece. And that's this. Let me pull it back just a little bit. All right. If you saw the other video, you'll remember the, the scarf inspiration. So I still have the hand over it all. Right there, see the scarf hanging on the canvas, the red. That was my inspiration for this piece. Um, the wildflower. Pastels, and I guess I could bring you up close to that because on this I'm using more brushwork, but um, I've gone back in here with my drawing crayon and and started drawing into the wet paint. This is an oil pastel for those of you who are curious about that. Just tip it down a little bit. So my my. My concept is um, I really, really like fiber and fabric, and uh, for years I felt that my fab my paintings were fabric and vice versa. People often say that. And so in this series, I'm uh, playing with all of that uh, idea of um, knitting the, the strokes, like a crosshatch strokes, and that these would be knitted stitches or woven stitches and weaving the colors under and over each other so that your eye has to uh, mix them um, in the process of viewing the piece. Therefore, you become a participant in the artwork and I'm not doing all the mixing for you. The mixing is happening on the canvas. So you saw that in the other one the other day. So that's what I'm getting ready to do now. On this, I'm doing more block in on this today. This is still a little bit wet, but that's fine. And I will just be blocking in some more uh, earth colors, uh, greens, and um, 
I may introduce some of the blues. And once again, for those of you who may be joining, Julie, where is it? Yeah. Uh -huh. There it is. Um, this is the inspiration piece for the big painting. So this is this is a commission piece, and um, the finished piece will will be inspired by this, but it is not intended to be a copy of it. So we're gener I'm gener generating, you know, new new work here. I mean, we could make a copy of it, but it wouldn't be half, half so much fun. So I'm going to block this in so you get an idea of what that looks like. And then um, if you have questions, um, type them in, and I'll try to see if I can answer them. <laughs> Not enough paint on that brush. This is really stiff. Try a different brush. So I've already started putting some texture into this canvas. There's some, there's some uh, scratch lines with the palette knife, and there's also some uh, there's also some uh, crayon lines. really want the, the this large painting to have a lot more deeper tones in it in the foreground here than the inspiration piece does. It has to carry, it's a much larger canvas, so it needs to have uh, in the room where it's going in particular, it has to have a little more uh, body to it, more depth. There's some dark elements in the room, and um, we don't want it to, it's going on white marble, so I don't want it to fade away on, on the white marble. And there's a very dark, there's some dark elements in the room. I, Just really putting in some shadow colors. Uh, most of these will get covered up, so we're, we're still talking about uh, foundational, foundational colors.
Okay, so let's have a look at the palette. This is, um, I'm a big fan of the French Charvin oil paint. I don't know if anybody is familiar with them, but they are, um, they are so similar to my pastel uh, colors that when I found them, I just, I was a, I became an, an addict. So this is Liquin and um, just Charvin um, Celadon Green Deep. Oh, we're getting a question now. Let me see if I can. Oh, Mary Ann. Mary Ann from Australia. Well, welcome. My gosh, that's awesome. Do you have a clear idea of what you are painting? <laughs> that's good. And the colors you will use. Or do you feel your way around the canvas? Uh, yes to both, actually, Marianne. Um, I have a very specific inspiration piece. And so while I hold that vision, I also uh, am holding the, the intent to tap the emotion from within me in this present moment. So the inspiration piece is it's relatively new, sometime in the last year, I can't remember specifically. It was one of my favorite pieces. It's called Dreamed a Wish. So it's a very close to my heart kind of piece. And it was one of those ones that, you know, the kind that hang around your studio for a while that you just add to. I would uh, have probably had three painting stints on it. Not that it was labored kind of, it wasn't like one of those kind that you work on and you work on and you work on. It was one that I was so delighted with that I finished it multiple times and every time it came more and more delightful. So it has that kind of uplifting, joyful energy and it's that that I wanna carry into this. So as I feel my way into these colors, um, these are probably not the underpainting colors that were on this, or at least not exclusively. Let me turn it back there for you. So I hope that answers that question. I was just getting ready. I have some of these funky palette knives that have funny little crow's feet. And there's another one that has, I don't know where it is. Yeah, there it is. There's another one that has like little teeth on it. I um, I have a, a background in printmaking. So I was trained in etching and lithography. And as an etcher, you learn to, you, I mean, what an etcher does is draw. So I'm a very, very, very rooted in drawing and I want to draw on the canvas. And part of uh, 25 years of working in pastel um, gave me that stick of pigment in my hand and my connection to the voice is is in that calligraphy of the drawing so that's I find that with the, with the knives and I can go back in and scratch the um, imagery out of it if we go up close you can see where I've already I hope you can see where I've already um, done some cross hatching. I don't know whether you can see that or not. All right, I'm, I'm not going to belabor it, but let's just see if this goes. Looking up. No, it gets a terrible glare up there, doesn't it? All right. Well, so at this underpainting stage, it's not, you know, it's not hugely um, mostly what this does is more, con it, it connects me to the canvas because it's like sandpaper. Uh, if I'm, if I'm rubbing the earth, the sandpapering, then I'm grounding myself. So I'm grounding my energy in with this every time I work, every time I scratch and draw in this fashion. Back out 
try to get that glare off for you. And I'm just going to do some drawing down here. places it just takes up there. stretches me down to the to the purples and, and in some places it takes me down to what's under it at this stage of the um, painting I don't really um, don't worry too too much about it. you know I want to be I want to stay loose and just establish some of the textures like if you were making a, a drawing with cross hatching it's a little bit of that here it gives you the when I scratch away at it if you can see this one it gives me the um, that orchid undertone when I when I expose that All right, I'm going to back this up a little bit so I can mix some more color up. I want to go to the, I don't know if I can do the palette. This is dry brush, and uh, what's under it is a little bit wet, but not too, too wet, so I'm getting a nice, people often say the, that my paintings look like pastels, and there's a reason for that, having worked in pastel for a good portion of my young artist years, I, um, I'm quite addicted to having my brush, dry brush, drag on the on the canvas. I like 
the textured canvas and I like the um, paint heavy enough that it will drag. Oh, where am I going? Back off here. I do like the teals. Okay, here goes. <laughs> no, painting has always been such a private Endeavor for me, it seems very bizarre that I'm uh, <laughs> painting with an audience <laughs> during a pandemic when we're locked down. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Um, what are you mixing your paint with? Hi, Gail. Um, the the first coats, the first couple of uh, the greens that I was putting on, I was mixing with liquid, and I'm using the liquid um, light gel. The light gel because it has some body and it won't run all over the uh, canvas and it holds so that I can draw the uh, palette knife through it and the lines will stay put. The right now I'm not using any medium. The Charvan paint is soft and buttery and that's what I love about it so it will um, it will go on nicely and not um, uh, Trying to get some more out of this too. I have a very bad habit of leaving the paint caps off and they get, um, they get stiff. It's not a good thing. All right, where else are we going? Uh, I think I like this more solid up here. Oh, 
sure enough on the brush. You might solve that by um, getting a palette knife. So once I begin to get uh, enough paint on the canvas, I got tired of breaking palette knives, so I bought some big ones. <laughs> and um, you want to cut loops on your canvas. A big palette knife is the way to do it. And then it's getting to the point here where I need to step back and have a look at what I'm doing. Get a good angle on it from down there. quite accustomed to mixing color on the canvas when I worked in pastel for so many years and uh, Now, I've been up close to it for a bit of time, so I think I, it's time for me to get a cup of tea and sit back with it and uh, uh, feel where I'm at. And um, so I think I'm going to end the video for now. You can still post questions and I'll come back to them, but this is getting way long. I was really only going to do 10 minutes and I see we're up to eight. Let me see if there's any more questions I can answer live. Oh, okay. Um, hey, Lorraine Hughes, hello, hello. Colors are much, colors you are choosing are beautiful. How much planning do you do before you begin? <laughs> does, or does the picture just emerge moment to moment? Um, so we've been talking about that. And also, um, I'll put a link below this video, Lorraine, for you because you can see uh, the prep work that I did um, there's another video prior to this one from last week, and I'll put that link down there so that you can watch it. Oh, hi, Kathy Fagan. <laughs> also, my sister's here. Um, what is the style of painting as a category? Oh, dear. Um, 
Mm. Some people call it impressionism. Some people call it open impressionism. I am more inclined to call what I do expressionism uh, simply because um, as I've painted over the years, uh, my focus is not so much uh, impressionist painting is uh, the traditional, if there is such a thing as a traditional impressionist painting or focused on capturing the effect of light. And while I have done a lot of plein air painting a la impressionist style, and it does inform my work, um, I would say I'm more expressionist because the color is coming from within and it's more rooted in emotions. So uh, the, the internal colors tie with uh, the energy frequencies of your chakras. So each chakra is an energy center along your spine and uh, the base of your spine that roots you to the earth is the red. And then as we come on up, it's just the rainbow colors, red, orange, yellow. Orange is your center of creativity. And then yellow is your solar plexus. This is your center of power, your gut instincts about things. Green, of course, is your heart center. And it's the, the bridge between the lower chakras that ground you to the earth and the upper chakras that connect you to spirit. So the fifth being the blue, the clear blue sky of voice, your, it gives you voice and the uh, uh, indigo, or uh, in painter's language, ultra, uh, ultramarine blue, and uh, the tip of your crown, which is the purple. And now if you mix a color beyond the purple, you go into what I call the orchid bridge, and that ties back to the base of the spectrum on Earth. So if you think back a minute about the colors that I was using to build the foundation of the painting, we were talking about earth colors and also the purples of the spirit. So the deep purple that ties to the, that comes down and bridges with the indigo of the third eye, which is where your intuition lives. And the one that goes beyond that into the ultraviolet range or what you might call orchid or magenta, that actually, if you keep going on the spectrum, it's a circle, it's not really a straight line, the rainbow is a circle, it comes back down to the base chakra and ties you to the earth. So that there's two bridges, there's the heart bridge, you breathe in and out energy through your heart with love and you, and you also breathe connection to spirit with this orchid vibration. More information than you probably really wanted for one afternoon. Okay, so I'm going to go sit and make a cup of tea and cogitate on this painting. And then in a couple of days, I'll pop back on. I really like to paint late in the afternoon like this. So perhaps um, we'll catch you. Has anybody else got questions before I go off here? I don't see anything else. Oh, one more. Is there a book that brings the chakra colors theory? Uh, you know, it, I have, a, I have a Facebook group called Joy's Garden, and I do more painting demonstrations and talk about that more in depth over there. Um, the chakra colors is really the only writing that I've seen about the chakra colors per se is just the rainbow colors. You can look up online what color is any particular chakra and find out those chakras and meanings of those. My end of it is really um, from an artist perspective and how all the distinctions of colors be, that are, that make you, you. So each of us vibrates at different frequencies you, and, and according to mood, you know, I'm, you're gonna be a different vibration one day than you are the next day. Not totally, but you know, you're gonna kind of go with the flow of things. And and as, as your, um, your balance ebbs and flows, then you, um, your aura changes and the main energy centers um, shift. So um, not drastically now. So when we talk about um, like for instance, a jewel tone or a pastel tone, a jewel color is pure, um, like the turquoise I was putting on, on here. This is, 
this is like a, a pure cerulean sky turquoise blue and that would be fifth chakra somewhere in there but the fine tuning the chakras a pastel color of this would be mixed with white say not to shift it over into the green spectrum but that has white that green has white in it whereas if it's the pure green it's more uh, this other green that i was putting on here so you know light energy is clear and and when we see it we see through it and paint is opaque and the cool part about paint and and um energy um, um, harmonies, balancing, wellness, whatever you want to call it, um, is that if you paint or you interact with art, it's physical. It has a physical form. It's not, um, it's not, this, it, it's more tangible than, um, oh, for instance, if I'm, if I wake up with a dream, you know, you wake up with a dream and it's a little bit elusive and you kind of go, what was that? I don't know. And, but if you write it down, suddenly it takes physical form. And as a human being on earth, hey, that's our job is to make all the inspiration energy that we receive from the creator physical. So you can do it with paint, you can do it with writing, you can do it with any number of different things, but Color is my gig, so um, I would I will post actually in the top of the post there is a link to that Facebook group for you, uh, Jesula, and um, I would encourage you to join that and ask more questions and as you go along in whatever it is you're working on. Okie doke. All right, y'all. Thanks for stopping by and watching my video, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye.